All right, triple chipmunk starts. So you know what that means. We're going for the turn one tier two. And definitely take a uh, sea urchin over swan. I'm sure I've seen a few different uh, swan turn one tier twos. I mean, obviously we're going to lose the first couple of turns either way. But uh, yeah, my uh, track record for turn one tier twos and customs certainly recently has not been great. Um, I, I can't remember. Uh, maybe I have had a, a win recently. I don't remember. But I definitely was on a streak of, uh, of getting them quite frequently, but then just uh, losing miserably. And of course, when I was going for the Griffin challenge, if I got a turn one tier two, I would generally always go for um, Spider in the hopes of uh, getting the Griffin. And then the turn one tier two challenge would be defunct because the Spider would get pilled in the end anyway. But we find a couple more urchins very quickly. Um, I think we might be able to tie here. Uh, yeah, it is going to be a tie. Two uh, Sphinx facing off against each other. And um, part of the reason why I feel like I have such a bad record with these in Customs, I mean, obviously Customs is difficult. But it's not so difficult that uh, you shouldn't be able to fashion a win out of these most of the time. But I guess it's probably because m most of the time the packs are set up in such a way that you're going for something else in the late game and uh, usually the tier 2 units are not intended to be held for the entire time. Now Sea Urchin maybe is a little bit of an exception. I think probably I've used Sea Urchin in a, a lot more uh, late game builds than I would um, most of the uh, tier 2 pets. Generally I want to get rid of them as soon as possible. But Sea Urchin is also one of my favourites and uh, so I'm happy to keep it here. So we pill the spider and we get Pug, which uh, isn't going to help, and I end up taking the seagull. Now, I can't remember exactly what I, I took the seagull for here. The pack was set up um, for the uh, the challenge where I was trying to get the entire team having uh, Rambutan, which uh, I'll link to that video in the description if you want to, to see it, but that this is the pack that I'm on. And so maybe I was just taking Seagull out of habit at this point, because I needed the Seagull for that build. Uh, but in the end here, we don't have any perks, the Seagull's doing nothing, and I end up just selling the Sphinx in order to get another um, Sea Urchin. Uh, pretty clutch snipe from the Hawk there, but actually I think we're going to end up losing anyway, because our um, Sea Urchin value is going to be pretty poor against this uh, summon team. And we take the level up. I actually get double links in the shop here, so that means I can grab the alpaca and immediately go for level 2 links, which is going to go well with our um, level 3 sea urchin. And then a double blobfish roll plus freezing the croc in the shop. I guess in some respects sea urchin plus snipes doesn't make the most sense because you're hoping that this, the snipers are actually going to um, reduce a lot of the health on the opposing team anyway. So how much does the um, Sea Urchin stat reduction actually help you? And here I, uh, I'm rolling with a lot of stuff frozen. I think it's mainly just because I'm going to greed for next turn with the alpaca and get an extra chocolate. Thankfully the links here removes the um, melon from the, uh, the blue bird. And we get the win. I don't know if the Sea Urchin mattered there or not, but it's sticking around regardless. And we roll into double chocolate. So I think, yeah, I'm going to go straight for the level 3 links. And we get the pill for the blob. Really surprising that that was another turn where I um, kept three pets frozen. Um, I could definitely have just bought the crocodile and replaced the hawk um, without really sacrificing anything on the uh, for the build. And uh, we get the win there against the team that actually was playing with the uh, the trout. So Hawk goes this time. Okay, I'm hesitant to do it. But yeah, we, we have the crocodile in the empty slot so we can get the level 2 that way. And then I end up finding uh, Team Spirit. So I feel like Team Spirit, you see, a lot of the time you don't see it without um, uh, Quetzalcoatl, but I think it's pretty good by itself, especially in customs where it's um, so easy to get level ups. 
that you're not, you know, you don't need another pet that is going to drive those level ups like uh, alpaca and so on. Obviously, they synergize well, but it's not really required. Um, and we also have a couple of pets here that are very close to leveling up. So even if we only take it for a short period, um, we can definitely use the stats. So we take the level up on Team Spirit, it doesn't trigger its own ability um, on its own level up, but we can use the links to get one level here. And then we'll start working on the Nurikabe. Um, I think good to have a little bit of a mixture here instead of just going for all snipes. A little bit of snipe defense can go a long way considering that we're probably gonna have relatively low stats even with the Team Spirit. So the snipes work out perfectly in that battle. I'm not going to take the team spirit here. We're just going to look for Nurikabe levels and probably um, chocolate onto the crocodile. So we get the level up, another nice injection of stats, and then we'll take the chocolate. And funnily enough here, we actually get matched with opposing team spirit with no Quetzalcoatl. Uh, I don't think any of the snipes hit their 3650 monkey on turn 12, so we probably don't have any chance here. I think uh, the Phoenix would have um, taken care of business anyway. And now we're kind of getting into the range where I should be abandoning the team spirit. I, I probably just want to greed for the crocodile level up before um, I'm willing to sell it. But, you know, hanging on and wasting a slot for one more round of buffs really just isn't worth it. This is kind of funny here, you know, snipe team versus uh, summons. And uh, it's so common in customs to have a summon team actually beat a snipe team because they just respawned everything. But thankfully it worked out in our favor that time. So we get the croc level and really now I should just sell team spirit. I freeze a lynx because we've got a lot of level threes already. And I think I end up freezing the crocodile as well. But I should really just sell here hoping to find two more chocolates next turn for the level 3 Nurikabe. Not really worth it when we could have an, another snipe this turn. And um, we do a lot of damage to this micro team, so we should be fine. And uh, yeah, even with their weakness, the Rhino isn't going to be able to do any damage. So I think, yeah, I do actually roll for the chocolates. I guess I only need one more, but um, probably should have just sold Team Spirit here instead of uh, holding out for it. And there is Water of Youth, so I could have actually just Water of Youthed um, the Team Spirit there, but I think I was just committed in my head to going for another Lynx. And thankfully our Snipe Team isn't really focused on hitting the front spot. So the Red Dragon doesn't end up getting much in the way of stats. And although it looks like it's going to be a trade, the Nurikabe's ability results in it hanging on with the 2 HP for the win. So there's another turn one tier two ticked off the list. There are absolutely loads of them still waiting to be completed in customs though.